Good morning. We are Beyond the Ball. This is Tony Abatini coming from you, coming to you from Chester, New York, uh, in Orange County. I am so glad to be home after trips out west, trips down to Florida, visiting college programs and some professional players and getting them ready for spring training. Now we're back in uh, at Frozen Ropes, and now it's all about the 7 to 12-year-olds. Someone asked me the other day, Tony, what audience do you like the best? G- going from having coached Olympic athletes to working with Major League Baseball teams for the last 15 years, what is your most favorite client? And I had to think about it for a second. And as enjoyable as it is to work with players and then have a chance to see them on TV or at the College World Series, I have to be honest with you, I love the six- and (laughs) seven-year-olds. Maybe it's the innocence, it's the joy, it's the carefreeness that goes on. And as I tell anyone who gets into coaching, if you want to be a really good master teacher, learn how to coach, instruct, and lead young people, the young athletes. Your ability to be simple and concise, um, to be supportive, uh, to have structure uh, without punishment, and really to allow them the flexibility to not only make mistakes, but to be free in their moves. I, I know th- this is the time of the year where we're constantly challenging the little league coaches and the parents to let the children play, let, let them uh, have the goofy swings, or we call it the Babe Ruth swings, and let them throw from different angles and learn. let them jump and play and, and whatnot. We think that's a better way of actually getting them better to perform not only once Little League season starts, but from the time as they get older. But I wanted to talk about the the, the tool of, of tools. And again, I'll go back to what is the most important tool to give an athlete as they progress from high school and, and beyond. And boy, you have so many of them. Speed is important. Uh, throwing is important. Hitting is important. And we, we have all the metrics for hitting and in the way of hitting it hard, hitting it far with the right angle and whatnot. But I'm, I'm going to present to you, and I, I think it's relevant to uh, probably uh, all athletes and even the non-athletes. And the tool I'm referring to, and I, I know it sounds kind of simple, is the tool of patience. Or put another way, learning how to be resilient and, and for the younger people that listen to the podcast, what exactly is resilient? Resilient is just really so many ways of describing it, having good emotional strength. Um, some call it your bounce back rate, your ability um, to address a situation and then very quickly recover. I know in the performance world, we talk about how quickly you can reset or reboot. Um, in layman's term, we know that things are going to happen uh, that, that will not be good. How quickly can you recover? Uh, I love the line, uh, Winston Churchill, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> Just a great way of dealing with and encouraging and how to build resilience. And some would say, well, can you really teach resilience and emotional strength? I think you can. I think at an early age, the sooner you talk to young players – uh, and, and even the young athletes, the 21, 27-year-olds, and let them understand that this tool, and, and I call it, it's kind of the glue. It's the glue that keeps all of their physical skills together in a way in which their mechanical and physiological performance is at a higher level. And, and the glue is this resilience or, again, emotional strength. And I think it's interesting, there, there's so much written about how to be mentally tough and being emotionally stronger and and whatnot. And it's really interesting. uh, And and I read every, I love reading. I love reading things that I I know nothing about. I read a book the other day on uh, how to perform um, neuroscience and the applications of neuroscience and and meditation and just learning about things that are kind of beyond my my comfort level. And I I realized that sometimes simple is, is better. And as I pontificated on, boy, what would be the best message, the best advice I can give on how to build resilience and this emotional strength. I I was really all over the place. And um, I walked downstairs 
And those of you that have been to Chester, New York, we have a, uh, a banner that sits in the left side of the building. And um, the banner is pretty simple. Uh, it has four lines on it. And the lines came from, I'm going to say, probably my biggest uh, educator, um, someone who taught me more about life and death and performance than anyone, my mom. And um, there's four lines on it. And as I looked at it today, I thought, wow, what a great and very simple way of teaching resilience. And the four lines, and I, I'll, I'll go through them quickly, and then I just wanted to touch point each of them. Laugh, don't cry. This too shall pass. It's all good. And it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And as simple as those four lines are, let's take the first one, laugh, don't cry. Humor, is it might be one of the best mental health therapeutic aids that can be imaginable. That l- learning how to laugh and, and not take life so seriously is a great way of building emotional strength. How about the next one? This too shall pass. Love that one. My mom used to say that all the time, right, when there was a situation or an event or something didn't happen. And it really reinforced the, um, the present and knowing how quickly one, one thing will lead to another and you're really one thought away from being calm again. And, and knowing that every situation truly is temporary. This too shall pass. The third piece of the resilient uh, platform, it's all good. Um, you know, optimism, perspective. When, when you have this mindset that it, it's all good, and what, what is it? It could be the routine. Uh, it could be the situation. And, and really knowing that no matter how bad the perceived situation is, eventually it'll be good. And, and learning that perspective, this ability to put things into a, a reframing mode, if you will, knowing that there's a lot more things going on in this world um, that are much more tragic and, and much more significant than maybe the little hiccup that we all go through. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, right out of Mr. Rogers. My mom used to talk about that all the time. Um, she actually had her license plates, I-A-B-D-I-T-N. People used to drive by and try to figure it out, what it was. Was it Indian? Was it Russian? Was it Italian? It was the acronym, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And that really is just simply a mindset. Um, she used to all the time, and I, I, I so remember that when you wake up in the morning and if you feel like shit, her, her mantra was always, and, and advice was, you, you wash your face, brush your teeth, you brush your hair, right, and you smile. And you never let the world know how shitty it, you are, you're feeling inside, knowing that how, you, how you're perceived and, and how you're addressing the situation for that day is everything. It's a beautiful day in that neighborhood. And I know that's very simple, but I, I think one of the, the tool that so many athletes that I talk to really need and really, quite frankly, so many players need Right, uh, both on and off the field, is is learning that this emotional strength. How about the happy muscle? In reading Tony Robbins last week, I came across a great line: "Happy is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it be, it, it gets." And, and I think just making a choice and knowing that we're always one decision away from changing anything in our life. We're one thought away from from changing how we feel on a particular day. All this builds up to having this emotional strength or this resilience. Um, and, and I think even with the younger players, I, I love when players come in here and we have a new line that they'll hit a ball and they'll miss, so they'll strike out. Or if they happen to be pitching, they'll throw a ball over the backstop. And so the new line we use now is, so what? <laughs> and, and we actually have the young ones just simply out loud say, so what? Right. As a way of saying, it's done, it's over with, I'm looking forward to the next pitch. And in the scheme of things, it's just not, that, not so important because I have two legs, I have food in the refrigerator, and I have a mom and dad that love, love me very much. That, that so what has become very powerful in, in teaching this emotional strength and this perspective that I think we all need in our lives and certainly with players. So I, I, I want you to um, remember, laugh, don't cry. This too shall pass. It's all good. 
and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? Right out of Mom's um, mantra and the, the poster that sits here. This is Tony Abatini signing off for Beyond the Ball. Make sure you join us every week. We're going to start bringing in some guests to talk about, I keep calling it the invisible part of the game, the things that really matter to athletes and to coaches. Uh, we have our big coaching convention that will be here in March. We're going to have some special guests. And, yes, we'll talk about the X and the O's and the hitting and the pitching, but a lot of it will be just simply how do we reduce anxiety, how do we get little players to play free, how do we get the older players right to play like goofy little 7- and 8-year-olds again. So we'll see you soon, and make sure you come by and visit us on campus at The Rock in Chester, New York.